Hello, I'm David Newberger. I'm the Commissioner on the Disabled for the City of St. Louis, Missouri. In my office, we are responsible for helping the city stay in compliance with the Americans with Disabilities Act. Act and we also uh, work with major city projects to try to make sure that they're welcoming of everybody. Uh, in, the, in this circumstance, I'm talking today a little bit about the work that we did in the Arch Museum, the great St. Louis Arch, and, and we did with a variety of people who have a variety of disabilities. In, 19, in 2012, uh, the uh, powers that be invited me to set up a group of approximately 25 people who had a vast degree, vast variation in their disabilities. We had people who had seeing, hearing, mobility disabilities, also people who had organic disabilities like MS, coronary disease. We had people with developmental disabilities and people with uh, in intellectual disabilities. And we all met together as a group and met with various of the designers who were uh, designing the museum and, and the arch grounds and the work that goes inside. When we first met, one of the first questions wa was how the entrance to the museum would happen. The museum, in some ways we say the museum starts up a hill uh, at an old courthouse, uh, which is part of the property and then it goes down this hill to the area behind me which is uh, takes people below grade and the museum itself is actually uh, underground. The first time we met with the, the, the uh, group met with the designers they showed us a design for the entrance and the plan for the entrance was to walk down this hill go to some doors walk a few steps and go down into the museum. And the disabled folks at our, in our group were worried about that because the only way that they could get in under those circumstances was to separate from the people who go down the stairs, go to the end of, a, of an area, take a ramp and come back. So they were separating the disabled people uh, from the rest of the population. And, and uh, as a group, we thought that that was not a very good idea. And so what was originally settled on is what you see today. And that is there are two slopes on each side of this entrance that are on a curve. And they slope down to go into the center where the doors are in the center of the museum. And so we call that universal design. That is to say that a person, any person, but including a person with a disability, should be able to go everywhere in the museum and to learn everything that his or her capacity allows, but also to do it with their family and friends. One of the biggest problems of people with disabilities is isolation. They get separated from the rest of the community. And so when we say universal design, we're talking about the idea of being able to go everywhere, to learn everything you can, and to do it with your family, your friends, the people who you like to work with. And so as a result of that, we developed the universal design uh, uh, activities. And, and we, what we did was, as the desi designers would come up with projects, we would meet with them in a group. Uh, and the designers would make their proposal and then people would raise issues. Uh, we dealt with issues such as, what should the handrails be like? We dealt with issues about uh, how one would do uh, the, the restrooms may be a little more than just in compliance with uh, the ADA. We, we worried about uh, how we would go to uh, uh, the museum ground, uh, the, the museum itself. There was originally a design for one small ra elevator and eventually they agreed to two large uh, elevators the, as well as escalators and stairs. So we've, we found many solutions uh, as we talked things through but what we ultimately did, what I ultimately learned in all of this, is that the difficulty that designers have is that they are used to looking at the world the way that they look at it. And when they're not disabled, that is just one way of looking at things. And the real difficulty that we have is a need for the designers to learn how we with disabilities see it. 
And so the essential part of this, uh, of this process, and, and one that I hope that museums across the country will fulfill, is bringing together disabled people so that those people can see, uh, th those designers can see why there's an issue for a given person with a disability. And so it becomes a, a learning process. Now, the, it, one, once we got engaged in this, it become a, became a wonderful thing. I remember one time we were talking about an issue about what we were going to do with a particular ramp, and somebody had made a solution that maybe what we should do is, do is close the ramp to everybody and, and, uh, or set up an, uh, another pathway that the person in a wheelchair could go one way and everybody else would use the ramp. And the head of our foundation at the time who was supporting this said, well, that's not universal design. And I knew that we had made a lot of progress here in St. Louis because that concept, it, it really does suffuse the National Park Service and it's it, all over the country, but also the folks in St. Louis. And we've made a great deal uh, of success out of that. As one of the big areas that are of concern are, are the exhibits themselves. Uh, exhibits can be uh, inaccessible for many people. For blind people, of course, they can't see what's going on. This m museum, we worked it out to have more than 80 different tactiles, touchable things uh, that blind people can use to interpret uh, what they're seeing. We had a major problem uh, with the fact that the, the posters behind glass are really not visible for people with uh, low vision. And uh, so what we eventually did was to uh, design some cards that fit, it, fit in a slot. And you pull the card up if you can't read what's behind the glass and you can read the card and you can see the exhibit that is behind the glass. The goal is to make sure that everybody with every kind of disability and everybody else would be able to take the fullest benefit of the museum that they can. A lot of the work that we did, uh, w w that we partnered with, was, is a firm called Haley Sharp Design from England. Uh, and they and we really became partners, and as a result of that, we really have some tremendous successes. Now I'd like to go into the museum and uh, share with you, uh, with some folks, uh, an example of the use of some of the uh, technologies that we've introduced to make the system accessible to everybody. This is Andrew uh, coming up to one of the interactive screens where people can, uh, using the touch screen, can get information. Notice that the way the cabinetry works it is very accessible to a great big wheelchair. And one of the features of this is that one touches the screen in order to activate it. There, there are pictures that are now changing in the screen and a series of choices for somebody to uh, begin the learning. One of the interesting things about this screen is that it was set up so that you don't have to reach the top of the screen to activate anything that is at the top of the screen. So that the screen becomes fully useful by people who have limited reach range and people who have obviously limited manual dexterity and yet they can get the entire uh, story that's coming from the from the screen. So you see Chris, uh, a friend of mine, uh, has difficulty uh, seeing, he's, he's frankly blind, but he is getting an opportunity to figure out that there is a stagecoach there and to understand that big stagecoach that's behind the glass that he wouldn't be able to pick up. One of the interesting things about the tactiles is that if they're too defined, uh, it's hard for a person to understand with their fingers what they're feeling. But this coach seems to work pretty well, uh, and he's able to pick out uh, people uh, sitting at the top of it. And so this is another way of making sure that everybody gets the sense of what it was like to be on the gateway to the West. In the uh, advocacy that we did with the Arch, one of my first uh, efforts was to say we wanted to go from the old courthouse to the top of the Arch to the water. Well, it turned out from an engineering point of view that we simply can't get wheelchairs to the top of the Arch. 
there are trams that are inside the legs of the arch that go up, uh, and, but it really takes people who can walk in and, and sit. And even at the top of the arch, you have to be able to stand and sort of get on your tippy toes to look out the window. So the solution that we had was a replica of the top of the arch r right here on the floor of the museum. The replica allows people to, to see uh, exactly what is happening outside because these are uh, circuit television cameras that are showing you what is in fact going on today. They change with the weather, they change with the crowds and so forth. So it is a, a way that people can avoid the need to go to the top. It turns out that a lot of people like it because it doesn't take as long in lines to go to the top uh, and, and also their claustrophobia feelings when you're riding the little cab that goes up and uh, a whole bunch of people are perfectly pleased to have this and not go to the top. So it's been a success. This uh, area of the exhibit contains in a class box the original model of the arch by the original designers. Uh, but outside of that, the uh, exhibit has developed a tactile that is a flat piece with a lot of different kinds of bumps that represent trees and, and that represent the old courthouse and represent the arch. And one of the features of this particular piece is that right at the bottom of the arch, there is a little bump that is the size of a school bus. And it allows then a person to understand the dimensions of the arch by being able to uh, feel the height of the arch and the height of the school bus all in the same instance. Another effort to try to communicate a very difficult thing when you can't see what's going on. Well, I hope you've found this brief tour of what we've done at the arch uh, interesting. All I can say is that there are many, many other features that are developed and, and many are even hidden in it. One of the glories of universal design is that you can make it welcoming for everybody without necessarily poking anybody in the face. On the other hand, many people don't even realize uh, and, uh, and understand how we are including everybody by having the designs that we have here. But the one thing that I know for sure, and that is that the fact that the uh, powers that be who did this work, the National Park Service, uh, the Gateway Foundation, and many, many other people uh, work together to give people with disabilities an opportunity to be full players in the game. And as a result of that, in my maybe not so humble opinion, made this a much more welcoming institution than it otherwise would have been. Thank you. Thank you.